Okay, welcome to the automated SQL injection tutorial. To start off with, what I've done is I've gone ahead and gone to my numbers at elearnsecurity.com and basically gone ahead and loaded up one of my challenges, which is over here. I'm just going to go ahead and change what I've been doing. And if you can see, there's this load up one of the books in the library. Sorry, I'm going through a proxy, so it takes a bit longer to load. Okay, so as you can see, each of these corresponds to a different book, so if I change the ID to two, respectively, this book should change. See? Okay, so what if I try and now enter an invalid book? For example, the negative one. Now, normally we would get um, something like an error, but in this case we don't come up with an error, it's just completely blank. So, this is an example of blind SQL injection. If you remember correctly, we have to use Boolean expressions to get a proper blind SQL injection. So, we're going to try all 1 equals 1 minus minus. So, this will resolve, this side will resolve to false, this side will resolve to true. Since it's an OR, as we should end up seeing the first book. And I put it to load. And as you can see, it works. Now, just to double check that this is actually a successful one injection, I'm just going to change it to negative one, and we should see the error page that we saw before. Yeah, so this is an error. Okay, now what I've gone ahead and done so far is there's a tool called SQL Map. Basically, it allows for automated SQL injections. So, what I've gone ahead and done is sqlmap.py for the python file minus u for the target url that I want to use in this case it's just this but with a one at the end I want to use set the parameter equal to the id so that's the target parameter that we want to target you can use any one that you want or you can just run it without a parameter in which case SQL map will basically target every single parameter in there until it finds one that is possibly vulnerable and then it will say well, do you want to continue searching for more or do you want to just use this and you can also use a proxy with slash dos slash slash proxy and then you have to use this HTTP thing and then your proxy address so I've gone ahead and done that and as you can see it says this is test so it's the gap parameter ID might, might be injectable. It can also say that it is injectable, but just then it just goes ahead and does all of these different tests. Um, it's recognizes that it has six columns and then it will show you like a little summary so places get parameter ID and then the vulnerable things and now that I know that this is vulnerable it's already saved to my log so what I want to do is I want to check what the current database is that this is running under So as you can as you can also see it automatically recognizes the fact that this is a MySQL server, what the operating system is, the PHP version, the fact that it's running ASP.net, the fact that the web server is Microsoft ISS 7.5, and also the MySQL database version.
so now I'm just going to wait for this to load. So after we get our current database, the next step that we need to do is basically dump all of the tables. From dumping all of the tables, we can then go ahead and basically understand where which table we want to specifically target for the data and then we can go on from there. I'm just going to pause it until it comes back with the data. Okay, so now we know that the current database is this. So I'm just going to go ahead and just double check something. So now that we know that, we can use the, I think it's slash D, let's go to D. Yep, slash D, which is basically the database to enumerate. And in this case, we want to use the one that we found above, which is that. Just go ahead and copy that. So, and then go up to our other one, slash D, and then provide it with. Not the one I wanted. So that's database and the database that we found. Which is okay, seven six. It's seven is six fifteen underscore one. Actually, uh, sorry, we also need to get the tables from this, so we need to dash those tables, which will then go ahead and dump all the tables from this database. Just again, going to pause it. As you can see, it also shows how many entries there are. And there we go. See, now we've got, now we know that under the, this table here, we've got. Two, no, under, sorry, under this database here, we got two tables, books and club members. What I want to go ahead and do is just enumerate all of the club members. So I'm going to change this to now tables. I'm going to do club underscore members. Slash dump. So this would basically dump all of the club members. There's also a lot of other things you can do, um, but the good thing about this is we'll automate most of the um, injections. So, for example, if you have something like an injection in the referrer, which is not very common, it will still help to automate it for you. There's also a whole bunch of other options. If you take a look, there's um, you can do a dump all here which basically dump all of the information from the database. Um, it's good if you just want to find everything that's on the database, but it's bad if you're looking for specific things. Um, sorts of things like users, passwords, privileges, roles. Um, you can even form a fingerprint against the server if you're just looking for that. Um, the other two important things are slash slash level and slash slash risk. Basically, they perform the same thing, but 
they allow you to perform more extensive requests. So if I didn't know that this was vulnerable, I could basically set it to a specific level based on how difficult I think the injection would be and based on the rank from one to five, one being the least amount of tests, five being the most amount of tests, it will go ahead and then test the injection for you. I'm just going to pause this until it comes back with the requests. Okay, now that it is done, as you can see, I've dumped the entire database table. So, yeah, it's gone ahead and set the SQL. It's the SQL query used between study entries, database uh, table, and there we go. So, I can see that inside here we've got a name for each three users, their password encrypted. Not good. Um, the username, oh sorry, actually this is their name, that's the username that they used to log in. The, if I expand this. The zip code, it seems. And what's this sitting on the ID? So now if I was to actually go ahead and complete this challenge, they want me to find the password for root, which is that. And I could then go ahead. And once I've really logged in to my actual account, then that would be the solution to the challenge. Yeah, so I hope this makes more sense. Um, if you want me to look, take a look at some more options, there's also operating system commands that can be done. Um, you can um, spawn a shell. Yeah, pump for an out of band shell, metapet or, or VNC. There's basically a whole bunch of stuff you can do on here. It's basically whatever you can think of. Um, there's even a wizard that allows you to basically go through it. If you don't know what the heck you're doing, you can basically use that. There's a tour that will automatically use tour, a whole bunch of different things. So, I hope this makes more sense. Um, if you need any help, just give me a PM or ask one of you guys on the form, or even if just start a new post, up to you, whatever you want to do. Okay, I'm signing out. This is that quiz. Have a good day.